Why is photography? Mr. Pritchard. I look at a Mexican culture. Moral Mars history. And some fun short chase films. I'm Max Rivera. And I'm Jackson Hoyk. You're, You're watching, watching Bulldog, Bulldog Bites. Bites. The spring has brought many thunderstorms and lightning shows. Wyatt Lucian has been working on his photography skills, capturing storms. Here is the story. Lightning may seem easy to most people to photograph. However, when doing so, there are many little things that must be done to ensure the best photos. For me, I have three things I like to follow when I take nighttime photos. The most important thing is to make sure camera is in focus. I've taken countless photos that I thought were amazing, but they just turned out to be out of focus and horrible. The second thing is to have your brightness down. Lightning is very bright and taking long exposure photos only makes the photo brighter as well. So it's better to have your photo darker than too bright because dimming down your photo is a lot worse than brightening up your photo. The final thing is just to have patience. I have sat outside for countless hours and most times it is worth it but sometimes I would just rather have slept. If you want to get photos in the daytime the best thing is just to take videos. Taking a photo of lightning in the daytime is really really hard. Long exposures don't work due to the brightness outside and if lightning is just too quick. You can use the frames in your videos and just try to go one by one. Just try to select the best bolt you can see within the video. Those shots are really cool. I wonder if you got any in Northern Lights. While most people think of marching band as only a fall thing, P Mr. Pritchard is busy planning year-round for it. Ivy Love has a story. Mr. Pritchard has been a band director for a very long time. Uh, I've been teaching since 2006. Um, so that's about 18 years if I include grad school and 16 years in the actual high schools. Directing such a large band does come with some difficulties. I think time management is really tough. You have to be really organized and have a good system in place. That's really difficult. The other thing is just the schedule can be very demanding at times. Mr. Pritchard has a lot to prepare for for the upcoming marching band show. So I start thinking about shows um, usually in about November, and then I work on getting the music taken care of. I work with an arranger who writes our music, and I kind of let him know strengths of the band, who we want to feature, uh, things like that, and then I'll meet with our drill writer over the phone. Being in band gives students many opportunities that they wouldn't normally have. I try to give students as many opportunities as they want. Um, if they want to try out for honor bands, then we give them that opportunity. There's jazz band, there's leadership opportunities if they want to serve on the Paw Patrol for marching band. There are many different bands you can audition to play in it during the school year like jazz and honor band. So jazz band is an extracurricular group. Um, it's a smaller group, um, typically one to two people on a part. Uh, saxophones, trombones, trumpets, and then rhythm section. And basically we play music written for that genre of music. So swing music, Afro-Cuban music, Brazilian music, funk music, um, some rock music kind of stuff, and that meets before school. And then honor bands are um, either audition-based or nomination-based. And this is where our students will go, join students from other schools, work with a guest conductor, put music together in either a day or a couple days, and then perform a concert. Every year, students come and go from band. Here's why you should play in the band. I think our students down here are very special and the bonds that they build are very unique and one thing I like is that our students are making connections across grade level and across their religious affiliation, across socioeconomic lines and this is kind of like a melting pot for the school where we have a lot of people coming from different backgrounds working together in, in a really cohesive way. Um, I think students who are in here generally have fun, <laughs> which I think is good. Um, and one of my goals is to also teach students how to work hard and how to recover when they uh, fall down or fail. So that resiliency, that grit, is one thing I try to teach too. And I can't wait to see the show this fall. Many of our students have a Hispanic or Mexican background. Gabriel interviewed a student to provide a glimpse of that.
Muy bien. ¿Qué es lo que más te gusta de la cultura mexicana? Pues me gusta la gran variedad que tiene la cultura mexicana. Me gusta que es muy amplia, muy amplia, muy diversa. Y me gustan todas las festividades. ¿Y si tuvieras algún lugar que visitar, cuál sería y por qué? Uh, me gustaría mucho visitar Guadalajara. Eh, es de donde yo vengo. Y creo que es un lugar muy bonito. No es porque yo sea de ahí, pero es un lugar muy bonito. ¿Qué es lo que más te gusta de la gastronomía mexicana? Pues lo que más me gusta de la gastronomía mexicana son los tacos, es el pozole, el menudo. Muy, muy variado, todo muy variado, muy, muy bueno. ¿Tú qué crees que lo, que lo hace diferente de otras gastronomías? La diversidad que tiene en sabores. Hay muchas diferen muchos diferentes platillos con muchas diferentes combinaciones y creo que eso lo hace única, probarlas. Y ahora hablando de bailes regionales, ¿alguna vez ha visitado alguna Galaguetza? Sí, sí he ido a la Galaguetza, son uh, bailes muy bonitos, me, me gustan mucho. ¿Cuál es tu baile que más te gusta? Uh, el baile de los machetes. El baile de los machetes es del folclore mexicano. Y creo que es tener mucha habilidad para bailar ese tipo de cosas, entonces admiro mucho a las personas que lo bailan. En lo personal, uno de, también de los mejores bailes eh, es la bruja de, del estado de Veracruz. Tiene un significado muy, muy bonito, aparte de cómo lo bailan y con la precisión con la que lo hacen y, y el, todo, pues los movimientos sincronizados. Es muy bonito. Es muy bonito. Sí. Muy bonito. ¿Cuál es tu festividad favorita? El Día de Muertos. El Día de Muertos me gusta mucho. Me gusta todos los colores y lo que representa. ¿Cómo acostumbraban a celebrar la mm, Pues, en, en, por ejemplo, en mi estado, pues normalmente se va a visitar a los cementerios, a tus familiares. Nosotros solíamos visitar a mi abuelito en, y llevarle ofrendas, flores, estar un tiempo con él. ¿Tú crees que la coquita en bolsa sepa mejor que la coquita en botella? ¿Y por qué? Definitivamente. ¿Por qué? No, no hay argumentos que describan el por qué, pero como la nostalgia que produce, como el sentimiento de estar con tus amigos y todas las sensaciones que creas, es como, sabe más buena esta. ¿Y cuando vas a un puesto de quesadilla, sabes que es un buen lugar cuando? Um, cuando las señoras están torteando las... Haciendo las tortillas, sí. Y hay un cuadro de Jesús. Un cuadro de Jesús no puede faltar, un rosario. Un mantel de Coca-Cola, ¿no? Y las sillas, las sillas de plástico. Sí, sillas de plástico. Sí. Y su salsa, ¿no? La que pica, la que no la pica. Que pica. La que pica más o menos. La que pica más o menos, la que no pica. Y bueno, pues te agradezco por tu tiempo. Gracias por invitarme. Y pues con mexicano lo dice hasta luego. Dice cámara, cámara en los, los videos. videos. And now another quick look at history in Lamar's, followed by some summer plans and some fun chase scenes created by and produced by Video One students. The 1973 Lamar's Community Football Team had a remarkable 10-0 season and claiming the program's first and only state championship. The 3A state championship was coached by Ron Charleston, who was also named 3A Coach of the Year. Doug Guthrie would go on to lead the team in rushing yards, nearly 180 yards. The Bulldogs would march their way to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, beating Central DeWitt 34-6. Did you know that the Carrier Gym was built before the high school? Carrier Gym was proposed in 1956 and it was paid with a $310,000 bond issue. Carrier Gym was built in 1958 in memory of Eugene Carey. He was a former coach at LCHS. In 1958, the school dedicated its new gymnasium, Carrier Gym, in his honor. Ten years later, Coach Carey was inducted to the Iowa Football Coaches Hall of Fame. The high school was not added until a vote passed in 1961. It was built in the fall of 1964. Today, hundreds of basketball games and volleyball games are being played until the competition gym, which was built in 2012. Now, Carry Gym is used for JV matches and physical education. What are your plans for the summer? 
uh, hoop and hang out with friends. What are your plans for summer? Um, I'll be 18, so just enjoying 18. Yeah. What are your plans for summer? Probably to work and sleeping. What are your plans for summer? Uh, I'm planning on visiting my family back in Alabama and uh, working on finding a new place to live, new apartment, so a lot of moving. What are your plans for summer? My plans for the summer are to hang out with my family, go boating, be up at Okaboji, probably some Yankton, and just hang out, garden, cook a lot, and yeah, just just be and not be here. <laughs> All right, what are you doing for the summer? I'm going to hang out with Mr. Black. Anything else? Play football. <laughs> hey. What are your plans for summer? I plan on cleaning my basement and spending a lot of time in a swimming pool and hanging out with my grandchildren.